Welcome to your building elements module on roof tiles. This module will introduce you to various types of pitch roofs used in timber-based residential construction. It will outline the different types of members and configurations, including details of the ridge, the valley, and the eaves. In the associated reading, you will be introduced to different types of roofs as well as the parts of a pitch roof. It is important to remember these parts as they will be required to understand the construction as discussed later. So for any kind of symmetrical, asymmetrical or butterfly roof that you might find, they will all need to deal with the idea of the ridge, the valley, the hip or the eaves within the context of the roof. Please make sure you remember these as you move forward. Discussing the different roof types, we will start with the simplest roof type, which is called a couple roof, and you will see that it is limited to a 3.5 meter maximum span. Once again, with all of these readings, please pay close attention to the diagrams alongside the text to understand how these are configured. You will see that in the diagrams as well as the text, you are continuously introduced to newer terms. You need to know these terms to be able to then continue to understand the construction of roofs later. Here we introduce to newer terms such as the ridge board or the rafter and the wall plate. Moving forward from a couple roof, you'll start seeing how these are modified to create broader spans, such as a close couple roof, where the addition of the horizontal members now allow us to span up to 5.5 meters and similarly the collar roof as well. Addition of different members and increasing complexity of the roof will lead to bigger roof structures such as the purlin roof or the double roof. Once again try to understand the configuration of the roof as well as remember the different members and their terminology. Moving on to the edge condition we now come across a hip roof or a hip ended roof. In a hip roof you are now also dealing with specific members that deal just with the hip such as the hip rafter or the jack rafter that is nailed to the hip rafter. Hip roofs also constitute in addition to hips the possibility of valleys to be formed between them. So here you get introduced to the idea of valleys as well. Increasing the complexity of the roof type, we now come across a traditional truss roof where triangulated members form a truss in the roof structure. These could be done in a standard construction as identified in a traditional truss roof or in an industrialized section where the truss roof is constructed in a factory and then brought to site. You will now see that in addition to the overall configuration of the roof, the range of materials that is being used has also transformed. Once again, you don't need to remember all the details of the sizing for these members because these will be discussed separately in your drawing exercises. But the sizing will give you an approximate idea of what are the kind of spans these members can help cover and the kind of sizing that is required for the connections. The overall roof Configuration is followed by an extended discussion on the different types of eaves. You should be able to identify the difference between an open eave, a flush eave or a closed eave. The further details of how these are actually put together in an assembly for a roof will also be discussed in your drawing exercises. Of particular interest would be the implication of the eave on the insulation of the roof. The section on dormer windows is less important as these are not used very regularly. However, you should look through it quickly to be able to recognize the possibilities of a projecting recessed or partly projecting dormer window inside a pitch roof configuration. This is all for this module. See you in the next one. Thanks.